Cleveland Cavaliers. Last year, they were 51 and 31, fourth seed in the East, and they lost in the first round to the New York Knicks in five games. <sighs> now, Cleveland Cavaliers, man. Um, first of all, their core is amazing. Their starting lineup is Darius Garland, Donovan Mitchell, Chris LeVert, Evan Mobley, Jared Allen. That is a nasty side lineup, defensively and offensively. And then you also have off the bench. I mean, I'm, I don't know if Ricky Rubio is gonna play because he's been dealing with some mental issue stuff, but you have him, I guess, if he plays, I doubt it. Sam Merrill, Max Struess, George Yang, Damian Jones, yeah, so. I'm gonna talk about that later, but first of all, the, the starting lineup. Darius Garland and Donovan Mitchell specifically. Donovan Mitchell had probably the best season of his career last year. He had the 71 point game, he was cooking. People were giving him, um, saying he's like one of the best, probably the best shooting guy in the league, but that was also because they didn't see a lot of Devin Booker. And I mean, the debate is there. Donovan Mitchell versus Devin Booker. I mean, it's a good debate 100%. I'm not going to talk about it, but it's a good debate 100%. Donovan Mitchell, though, has definitely solidified himself as one of the best shooting guards and one of the best players in the league. And you have Darius Garland beside him, who was an all-star, I think it was two years ago by now. No, yeah, so yeah, two years ago, because it wasn't last year. And you have also Evan Mobley, the young rising star, and Jared Allen. These four are so nasty because I know because every time in 2K, if you go forward a few years, the Cavs always turn into a super team with these four dominating, especially Darius Garland. And there was an issue last year with Darius Garland and Don Mitchell being able to coexist, being able to make it work, because both of them are amazing players in their own right, but it's just if they can make it work cohesively type stuff, and if they can coexist. This is a problem with a lot of teams because a lot of teams have two star players and it's hard to get them to coexist because they have kind of conflicting play styles. But I think with Donovan Mitchell and Darius Garland, they can make it work. Donovan is a scorer. Like he's, his most valuable asset is his scoring. He can get to the basket and finish. He can shoot. He's just amazing. One of the best scorers in the league. And Darius Garland is a great scorer, but he's also one of the best playmakers in the league. So Darius Garland leans into the playmaking more and doesn't look to score the ball. If he's looking just to get to his guys, get his guys open and get them good shots like Donovan Mitchell, then I can see that being an absolute win. If Donovan Mitchell can move off the ball and Darius Garland handles the ball more at the time, then W. Then Donovan Mitchell gets open, hits some threes, maybe gets to the basket, get to the basket, get some shots. And Darius Garland becomes a real facilitator for this team who can really help run this team's offense. So I can see those two making it work 100%. And then you have Evan Mobley and Jared Allen down low. Um, last year in the playoffs, there was the issue with them against the Knicks where the Knicks destroyed them in the rebounding, in the rebounding numbers. And Evan Mobley and Jared Allen, the two tallest guys in this team, the two basically seven-footers, we're gonna out rebounded by Josh Hart and Jalen Brunson. So there's definitely a lot, hopefully, that Evan Mobley and Jared Allen learn from that um, encounter in the first round. And hopefully they can come back this year and grow from it and be really, really good. And we'll see what happens. But there was talks with Jared Allen and trade rumors. And I think those talks have gone away by now because Jared Allen and Evan Mobley look like they're gonna be the twin towers of this team. And I like the Evan Mobley. I like, I think Evan Mobley will have a significantly better season. I definitely think that if Darius Garland steps back and takes that more point guard playmaking role, this team could have two all stars in Donovan Mitchell and Evan Mobley because Evan Mobley on the defensive end makes a huge impact. He was almost the defensive player of the year last year. And imagine coming into this year. He's even better. He's maybe scoring. Maybe he, if he gets that scoring down, because he's seven feet tall. If he can score in the post more, if he can continue playing the defense that he's been seeing him play, and he could just 
level up his game because this is the third year of Evan Mobley. First year, his rookie year, he did amazing, but you're not expecting too much. Second year, you're honest, also not expecting too much, but he did actually have a really good year and became one of the best defenders in the NBA. And now his third year, this is when we want to, or not really we, but I want to see an all-star jump from Evan Mobley. I want to see him, he's one of the guys who I can see definitely going up there to get become that all-star type player. And in the East, it is a little harder, I guess, because you have Giannis, you have Embiid, you have um, Tatum, you have Jer Julius Randle, you have Chris Porzingis, you have Pascal Siakam. There's a lot of really good front court, front court players in the Eastern Conference, but I definitely think Mobley can surpass some of those guys and make it to those top ranks of power forwards, become an all-star all reserve. And if he can do that, W. I want to see it, man. I want to see it. You have Jared Allen, of course. <laughs> There's a mean the lights were too bright last season when he played against the Knicks. And if he could just do his job down low, be that center who can handle the post. I mean, Evan Mobley and Jared Allen really are two guys who could handle the post. And nobody scoring in the post with those two down there, pretty much. So if those two can do their job, this team is looking nasty. And you have, of course, I mentioned Don, Don Mitchell and Darius Gunn. You have Karis LeVert, who they did re-sign, and he's a nice little piece. I mean, he was in All-Star Conversations, I remember, like, two years ago when he was playing for the... Or was it three years ago? Some time ago, when he was playing for the Pacers, he was in All-Star Conversations at one point, and he was doing really good. And then since then, he's kind of regressed. He's come down from where he was before, and he's, he's still a really good player. He can still add stuff to his team on the offensive side of the ball. And, I mean, he's not, it's not like they're expecting him to do a lot. If he just does his job, fit, plays his role, and does that, that's a W. One problem for this team, I guess, was really the three-point shooting, because you have a bunch of ball, you have two ball-dominant guys, and it's good to surround those guys with shooters so that they get open and then they can kick out and type stuff. So, you have Karis LeVert, who's a pretty decent shooter, but they added Max Struess in free agency, who was a really amazing addition because Max Struess is a guy, we saw him on the Heat for the past two years. He's been one of the best three-point shooters for that team, especially in playoffs. And now when you add him to this team, you have Darius and Donovan who are gonna be handling the ball most of the time. And Max Struess can be open in that corner on that wing for some threes, 100% a W, man. I am excited to see this Cavs team in action. One of the one of the worries I do have about this team is their depth, because with Ricky Rubio not playing, because I'm assuming he's not gonna play, Ty Jerome, Sam Merrill, and and Damian Jones are on their bench, and I'm like, I don't, I don't exactly know how that's gonna go. Because especially in the season and guys get injured, you're going to need that bench depth to help out so that you don't fall off completely. And I don't know if they have that. That is one worry I have about this team. I mean, Max Schroes and Isaac Okoro are two guys who can be good off the bench. George Niang, maybe Dean Wayne coming to the clutch every once in a while. But aside from that, I don't know, man. I mean, we'll see, but uh, I don't know. Isaac Okoro is another guy who I haven't I haven't talked about him much in this video yet, but he's a guy who brings a lot on the defensive side of the ball, which is a great addition because he can guard the guys in the perimeter. You have Mobley and Jared Allen who can guard the paint, and Mobley is a guy who can guard multiple positions, but you do want a man who can clamp up, well not really clamp up, but who can guard the best guard on the other team because Mobley should, as good as he is to guard all positions, <clears throat> He's not, it's not like you're gonna put him on Curry for the whole game. You want a guy you can put on on stars like him for the whole game. And that's probably gonna be Isaac Coro this year, man. Or Karis LeVert, maybe. You never know. But we'll see. I just like the whole makeup of this team, to be honest. And I'm excited to see how they do, especially with Darius Garland and Evan Mobley. With those two. And Don Mitchell, of course, too. But those, Darius and Evan are the two. Two of my favorite players in this team. I mean, actually, that's not even true. 
because Donovan, Mit Donovan Mitchell has been one of my favorite players in the league ever since he got drafted. So, yeah, I really like all these all these guys on this team. And hopefully they can succeed, man. Hopefully they can succeed. I can see their ceiling legit being a one seed. Because that's how good they are. I had them as the two seed if I remember last year. And this year I have them up there as the one seed. I mean, their floor is definitely like a five or six seed. But I think they're going to be better than that. Especially with Evan Mobley getting better with Darius Garland and Donovan Mitchell. Figuring it out. I can see this team being really, really good. But... Yeah, that's all I really have to say. This Cavs team is going to be good, man. They're definitely going to be good. How good? We'll see. But they're definitely going to be good. Thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed. And if you did, don't forget to like, subscribe, share. Comment down below. Tell me what you think about the Cavs coming into the season. Tell me how good you think they're going to be. Do you think they're going to be a one seed? Do you think they're going to be the A seed? I don't know. But tell me what you think. That's all for me today. I'll see you guys next time. I'm out.